Hello, my name is Alexander Kerry. Welcome to the program. This year, Georgia is making almost a century of independence from Russia. Various events in Kyiv are planned for the occasion. Joining me in the studio to talk about Georgia's past and future, among other topics, is David Sakvarelitsy, Ukraine's former Deputy General Prosecutor. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting. Uh, first question <clears throat> will concern the tie between um, Georgia and Ukraine. How do you explain this, this tight bonds between the two countries? First of all, I would say that uh, Georgia and Ukraine has a lot in common. Uh, history, the problems, uh, the troublemaker, uh, which actually occupied uh, 20 percent of Georgia, 22 percent of Georgia's territory, and a uh, big part of Ukraine's territory. I mean, Crimea, uh, part of Donbas and Lugansk. The same happened in Georgia. We had the problem in Abkhazia. We had a problem in. Uh, Samachablo, I, I will not use uh, the term uh, South Ossetia because it was artificially created for legitimizing uh, the separatist region, actually. It's a historic region which was called Samachablo and it never existed. Um, so, uh, and we had uh, Georgia-Russia war to 2008, that time I was the regional prosecutor. I was based in Gori, my head office was based in Gori, the city where actually the military actions and the occupation took place and etc. And um, I think that the character of the people is also very similar. Uh, both in Georgians, well, you know, usually neighboring countries usually have uh, some kind of historic uh, tensions or problems or some history or um, something in the memory. For example, Ukrainians have, uh, had, have had problems with Poles, for example, and vice versa, and etc. Georgia had problems with Turkey, for example, uh, and we had some uh, small problems with other, other neighboring countries or big problems with Russia, etc. And Ukraine is the only country with which we, we didn't have any problems. So uh, that's why uh, starting from 2008, Orange Revolution, and it happened after Rose Revolution in Georgia, when the main progress uh, t took place in Georgia. Uh, we have been very active in Ukrainian politics. We have been supporting uh, the progress in Ukraine. Ukraine have been, has, has been uh, supporting Georgia. Uh, in, in, in terms of even war, uh, even Kuchma was uh, providing us some help during the Ajarian Revolution when we um, established uh, and uh, returned the control over the territory of Ajaria region where Batumi is located actually mm -hmm. and etc. Then um, we had um, uh, some military uh, support from uh, Ukraine uh, in terms of uh, so uh, the so-called anti anti um, aviation, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, security and defense and etc. So we have a very deep political and so uh, cultural, of, of course, of course. And uh, I think that uh, the, the problems uh, with Abkhazia and the problems with uh, Crimea and Donbas will be solved uh, at one and the same time. Mm. Because, because the only recipe for uh, solving this kind of problems and big win, especially in case of Ukraine against Russian aggression will be a very quick and uh, visible progress in terms of reforms, economic progress, uh, in, in terms of human rights, Which the liberties, to, Europa, to Europeanization of Ukraine. I don't mean that Ukraine should uh, join NATO in two or three years or, or, or be the part of European Union, but uh, the economic progress and the real well-being of the people will serve as a good example of uh, re 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 reunification of Ukraine. Which brings me to my, to my, uh, to my other question. So apparently uh, the fight against the common enemy, which is Russia, brought those countries together in some sort of ways? Well, uh, this is one of the factors because uh, uh, Russia has been more, uh, more active and aggressive in terms of Ukraine because ma Ukraine has been a um, more mainstream Soviet country for Soviet Union than Georgia, ob objectively and obviously, because it was bigger. It was, and Russia always uh, saw Ukraine as some kind of continuation of Russia. Uh, in Georgia, we also had the problems, but uh, here in bureaucracy, for example, in, in terms of secret services, ideology, the demographic, uh, let's say, environment of Ukraine, Russia invested much more, let's say, and implanted more bombs than it did in, in, in Georgia's case. So, of course, uh, losing Ukraine from Russian orbit is losing the Russia itself, because why, why Putin started a war uh, in, in Ukraine, uh, that was because he was afraid that he will have Maidan uh, in front of Kremlin, because I remember that in 2004 a lot of uh, Russians were coming to Orange uh, Revolution, to Maidan, just to breathe the freedom and the liberty. So 
just a simple thing I want to mention is that uh, Europe and West is not just the country of Austria, for example, or Germany or Britain and etc. It's just a, it is, it, it's, it's, it's a better values than, than Russia exercises, it's a better economy, it's better progress, technologies, and just the well-being of the people. What is Western is usually best, that is Russian actually, because mm. Russia itself uh, can, cannot be um, uh, named as a progressive country, let's say. Despite having a huge resource of oil and gas, I don't think that Russian technologies, for example, are the best now in the world. And I usually ask the people if, if uh, the Russian world is so comfortable, then why uh, Russian oligarchs or rich Russians Come keep their the money, keep their money mm. in, in, in yeah. Western banks, they buy property or uh, just spend their holidays in the best, uh, all the luxurious, let's say, resorts of Europe or United States or civilized world, and why they do not drive Moscow, mm. for example, or Volga, and drive Mercedes-Benz or, or BMW, and why their children are actually st studying in the best European universities. But we're right? going to go. We're going to go to the to the to the value because there, there has been discussion to enable the the Guam. Uh, the Guam Union and the, the, this this free market. Yes. So um, so this Guam to explain to the viewer who doesn't know, so like Georgia, Ukraine, Azerbaijan, and uh, Moldova. So is it an alternative to create a block or an area, a free trade area in between Europe and 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 Russia? Is it? Uh, a, I have been the member of Guam path? when yes. I was the MP, member of Parliament of Georgia. I was the Guam delegation actually, and I had close ties with all the countries that you have mentioned, and I think that Guam is a good platform that has a big perspective, but uh, Russian influence had been also strong and they were doing a lot to, to block the, the development and evaluation of this uh, organization. But I think that uh, Ukraine and Georgia and Azerbaijan and Moldova have a big uh, resource, but in case of Moldova, Ukraine and Georgia, we have a big problem. We have an oligarchic uh, system of ruling in uh, the three countries, for example, that does not enable these countries' uh, democratization, uh, economic progress, and uh, uh, liberal way of development, right? Because the same problem have, they have in Moldova, they have an oligarch ruling Moldova, who is a close friend of Poroshenko at the same time. You have Poroshenko, who actually, in, in, in the situation when the country um, uh, lost most part of its economy during the last three years, he, he became richer uh, together with the most toxic oligarch, uh, Renat Akhmetov, which Ford Fortune actually, and which which, uh, which ca whose capital actually rose twice uh, during this er uh, years, and the same in Georgia we have Ivanishvili, who is the uh, stakeholder, a shareholder of Gazprom, who is a Russian oligarch who actually made his fortune, uh, earned his fortune. So in it's Russia. inside the system already. Yeah, it's, it's an oligarchic system, rule, yeah. and I think that sooner or later we will call a huge uh, anti-oligarchic uh, meeting and conference in Kiev, maybe and we will gather the people from the above-mentioned countries to discuss the problems, what will be the future of this region, what shall we do makes me to go avoid to the my, oligarchic uh, rule of the country. Which makes me go to my next, to my next question, because uh, so, Georgia is often shown as a, an example for cleaning corruption problems. Uh, what, in your opinion, should Ukraine do to follow the same path, except this anti I think that uh, Ukraine, uh, we should do, because I'm the citizen of Ukraine, we should all struggle for the... Uh, uninstallment of uh, the political elites, actually, who are heavily controlled by the oligarchs in Ukraine. People today are hungry for serious changes and from, for, for, for the strong hand, which will actually uh, find the ways uh, to quickly actually stabilize the situation, to have a radical and systemic reforms, especially in uh, law enforcement agencies, especially in the system of justice and in economic reforms, especially in deregulation, uh, minimizing the functions and the rules of the state and maximizing the, the benefits for the business, especially for the middle and small business in Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, and the rough and some rough actions, anti-corruption actions that can actually have an effect because all these oligarchs have a direct links to Poroshenko. They can freely open the, the door and talk to Poroshenko, to prime ministers and etc. There has no been any government that will just lower actually their rank to to communicate with the just an ordinary investigator, the prosecutor, who can explain that we, ha we are having and building some new institutes which are well paid, which are well trained, the bureaucracy will be smaller, it's going to be efficient and we will have a strong lead and understanding what is the new, new Ukraine without what, these people. What, what, what says that this same we, new, new... I think we should maybe. have uh, uh, the new elections, 
And I think that uh, the mistakes that have been made under Maidan, when the biggest part of the civil society just relaxed and they just went to serve their country or to protect their country in uh, Donbas and in, in Lugansk areas, in ATO, they just uh, missed uh, the, the momentum when the political elites, which have not been changing in Ukraine for 25 years, again took, uh, let's say, lead and they privatized they stole the idea of Maidan and they still are in the, in, in the ruling of the country. In, you in say the it's, too, the country. it's too late now to change the country? No, it's not too late, but we are losing a lot of time. We do not have a luxury in Ukraine to lose each day, for example, because each day the welfare, the well-being of each Ukrainian is being stolen by these people. So we should just put these people into the jail for some while. We should implement plea bargaining agreement as it works in the civilized countries that will economize a lot of state resource and a lot of uh, time, let's say, and we should fill the budget with the money that they're stealing. If they will not fulfill their investment obligations when they were privatized, privatized, privatizing the, the biggest plants, let's say, government-owned, state-owned plants, then we should nationalize uh, the, these plants and have a real fair and honest privatization process, like in Krivorostal, for example, where the mm -hmm. real money and billions of dollars will flow into the budget of Ukraine. Not stealing, not raidering from the state, but just a fair and open privatization process as, as it happens in all private... Because today they are, uh, they are trying to trick the people. They are telling them, oh, this, for example, Odessa plant, which is the biggest plant, in one of the biggest plants in the region, uh, belongs to the people. It is, yeah. it is state. That means that that belongs to nobody. It belongs to a prime minister or the president who also has... who usually have... An, uh, the legitimacy or, or the, the, the power to appoint or dismiss the CEO of the factory, which by, by, by their turn actually steal, steal the money and uh, flow the money through the shell companies or to the offshore accounts and etc. These are like, like a holy cows, for example, for, for presidents and prime ministers and oligarchic class, this kind of state-owned enterprises, to just uh, exploit them as a cows. That I understand. But they are called state. <clears throat> that, state I, that, that I understand. But like, if you if you, if you're calling for nationalization, what uh, what will happen? Is maybe other oligarchs might come to take over those nationalized uh, you know, enterprises. Uh, it could happen. Uh, oligarchs usually do not pay me billions for privatization. Usually, big multinational companies pay real money, like Lakshmi Metal, for example, Indian company that privatized Krivoy Rog. Are there any questions to this company? This was the only one fair privatization in the history of Ukraine, where billions of dollars uh, were accumulated in the state budget. So by, for, with that money, we can build new roads, new infrastructure, protect our army, support our army, new schools, new education, and just uh, stimulate our economy. Okay. Thank you very much for this Thank you. debate. It was a pleasure. It was David Sakharadite, Ukraine's former deputy, uh, Ukraine's former deputy general, Secretary. Thank you for watching the program. Stay tuned for the rest.